this unit follows up on our last unit where we were looking at reduction of aldehydes and ketones to yield alcohol molecules. Now what we're going to take a look at is instead starting with ester functional groups and see whether we can reduce those to also yield alcohol products. Let's go ahead and get started with that. When we're talking about an ester, of course, we're referring to a molecule that has a carbonyl group directly bonded to an O alkyl group. So we're referring to something like this, our carbonyl group directly bonded to an O alkyl group. So we're defining here that our R prime has to be an alkyl group. It has to be a carbon atom directly bonded there to the oxygen. Otherwise, if we're a hydrogen, we would have a carboxylic acid group that's going to behave differently than this. So let's take a look at our a molecule here, and we're gonna treat it with a reducing agent. And specifically, we're going to treat it with lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is the heavy artillery of the reducing agents. As we mentioned in the last unit, it is the strongest of the reducing agents of lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. So we're gonna use that. We'll use it in an ether solvent or some other aprotic solvent that doesn't have a proton to donate to it because protic solvents such as water and alcohols would react with that and we definitely don't want that. We want to control the reaction at the very end. We'll acidify the solution. So let's take a look at first off the mechanism that we would expect to go on here to react our ester with our lithium aluminum hydride. And the mechanism for this is going to be very analogous to the mechanism we saw in the last segment where we were reducing an aldehyde or ketone with sodium borohydride. We're going to carry out this reaction very analogously with the lithium aluminum hydride serving as our hydride donor, serving as the donor of a hydrogen with essentially a lone pair of electrons. That's why we call it a hydride. So we can write out this mechanism with our ALH4. The aluminum there with the four bonds to hydrogen is going to have a negative formal charge. The lithium is there as a counter ion. It is just around to spectate. It's not actually going to participate directly in our mechanism here. So what will happen is that one of these hydrides will come over. By definition, a hydride has to have that electrons from that bond with it. So it's essentially having a lone pair of electrons coming over with the hydrogen to attack the electrophilic carbonyl. So this is a classic case of nucleophile attacking electrophile. The hydride is our nucleophile. The carbon is our electrophile. That attack is going to force the carbonyl electrons from that pi bond up onto the carbon and that will lead us to our intermediate structure here. So let's go ahead and draw that intermediate. So now we've formed our new carbon hydrogen bond there in blue and we've created our intermediate. So at this point we have to keep in mind that as we've seen before, an O alkyl group under basic conditions is a good leaving group. And so that leaving group's departure is going to be very favorable because what we can do is bring the pi bond electrons back in by taking that lone pair of electrons on the oxygen and moving those down as the leaving group leaves. So we'll break away that O alkyl group, which is favorable to happen because the oxygen is relatively happy, especially under basic conditions, to have a negative formal charge. So we're gonna break that away. And then we'll also be reforming the carbonyl group. So I'm gonna show that like so. And at this point, we've made, as our major organic product, an aldehyde or ketone. In this case, it's an aldehyde. So keeping in mind here that aldehydes and ketones are definitely subject to reduction reactions with lithium aluminum hydride, what we'll do here is then continue onward because the lithium aluminum hydride has four hydrides that it can donate one, two, three, four, and we've only used up one of those so far. So what we would do then is use a second one to carry out the next addition of hydride to the carbonyl group. And I'm not gonna redraw the full lithium aluminum hydride again. I'm just gonna show the hydride coming in. This is a second unit of hydride attacking again the electrophilic carbonyl carbon forcing the pi bond electrons up onto the oxygen so that we don't go over the octet of that carbon. And we'll go ahead and draw out our product resulting from that step. So I have an oxygen anion once again, and a new carbon hydrogen bond that was brought about using the electrons from the hydride. So now we have this and we have no more leaving groups available here 
because we have just carbon hydrogen bonds and carbon carbon bonds as well as that oxygen anion which certainly isn't going to break away on its own and so then what will happen is this intermediate will just sit around and wait until we acidify the solution here at this point and then it will pick up the proton from that acidic mixture to give us our final alcohol product. So what we're going to see here in our final case scenario is that if we start with an ester starting material, our final product is going to correspond to the addition of two hydrogen atoms to the carbonyl group and the loss of that O alkyl group. That O alkyl group will no longer be there. What will happen to it eventually is that you have it, you'll notice it's floating around here as an oxygen anion. Eventually it will, when we acidify the solution, pick up a proton to be converted into an alcohol product, but this is generally not the alcohol that we're interested in when we're thinking about the final product that we actually want. It's generally going to be this guy, the one that was derived from the carbonyl over the carbonyl and that R group that's directly bonded to it. So we essentially take that portion of the molecule and convert it into an alcohol by adding two hydrides to it. So we ask ourselves, could we use sodium borohydride instead of lithium aluminum hydride to reduce esters? And the answer to that question we said is no. So why is the answer to that question no, that we can't reduce esters with sodium borohydride? Well, there's a couple of different things that we can mention here. One is that lithium aluminum hydride is a stronger, more reactive reducing agent than sodium borohydride. So the fact that lithium aluminum hydride is a stronger reducing agent than sodium borohydride is necessary here because esters are more highly oxidized molecules than aldehydes or ketones. And due to the fact that they're more highly oxidized, that means they are harder to reduce. So we need that strength in order to reduce an ester. Since the ester is highly oxidized, it's gonna require the heavier artillery to get it reduced. Looking at an ester compared to an aldehyde or ketone, we can see why the ester is more highly oxidized. So we take a look at the ester structure here at the far left. And we make the assumption here that the R prime group is an alkyl group. And so if we take a look at the number of carbon oxygen bonds, we have three carbon oxygen bonds in an ester, making it the most oxidized. And then second most is going to be our aldehyde and ketone molecules, which have two carbon oxygen bonds. And then with one carbon oxygen bond of the molecules we're comparing here, the alcohol molecule on the far right, we would describe as being the least oxidized of all of these. And so the ester, therefore, is going to be the one that we absolutely need the lithium aluminum hydride in order to reduce. The other question we can ask is, could we reduce esters using hydrogen and a metal catalyst? And the answer to that is no. Esters cannot be reduced with hydrogen and a metal catalyst. Hydrogen and metal catalyst only reduces carbon-carbon double bonds and carbon-carbon triple bonds. It can't reduce any aldehydes, ketones, or other things that have carbonyl groups. So I'll add that as a note here. So now keeping all of this in mind in order to tie everything together, what I'm going to do is make a table to illustrate what reducing agents we can use effectively with different types of functional groups. And if you remember the last segment, you will notice that this table that we're making here is very analogous. It's just adding the line for esters and reduction reactions of esters here. So we fill in this table to ask ourselves whether each of the functional groups across the top can be reduced using the reagents listed in this column here. So taking a look first at sodium borohydride, can it reduce esters? We just said the answer to that question was no. It is not strong enough to reduce esters. On the other hand, lithium aluminum hydride is strong enough to reduce esters. Hydrogen metal is not strong enough to reduce esters. It can reduce the other groups, but it can't reduce esters. So then coming along, when we look at the ketone column, can ketones be reduced by sodium borohydride? The answer is yes. Ketones can also be reduced by lithium aluminum hydride, and they can also be reduced with hydrogen metal. Aldehydes are gonna be the same as ketones, so it's gonna be yes all the way across the board here. Alkynes are not reduced by hydride reagents. They are reduced 
by hydrogen with a metal catalyst. Same thing for alkenes. We can apply this information from the table to example problems where we look at the desire to selectively reduce some functional groups out of molecules. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and I'll leave this little table up here in the corner as our cheat sheet for now, as our training wheels to get us started on this example problem. So in the example problem, what we want to do is propose reagents that will allow us to do the following chemical synthesis. So we're asking in order to do this chemical synthesis, what can we use here? So we want to start with the molecule on the left that has a ketone group and a carbon-carbon double bond, and we want to reduce, you'll notice, selectively just the carbonyl group to a hydroxy group, leaving the alkene group in place. So how can we do that? We go and we look at our chart of reactants that we have available, and we'll notice that sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydro will both allow us to reduce ketones without reducing alkene groups. And so therefore our choices here are sodium borohydride, which sodium borohydride can be used in the presence of protic solvents such as alcohols, and in fact you need a source of proton there to do the protonation steps, we can either use that or we can use lithium aluminum hydride, which has to be protected from protic solvents, so no protons there, no alcohols, no water. And then secondly, after that reaction is totally finished, add acid to complete the protonation step. So either of these two would be perfectly acceptable. On the other hand, if our desire was, say, to take and create both an alcohol group and a carbon-carbon single bond there. So if our desired product is what we're showing in the upper right-hand corner here, the best choice for that would be to throw in an excess of H2 with a metal catalyst such as platinum because the H2 and platinum, if we use this H2 in proper molar quantity, meaning two equivalents or more, that's going to reduce both the carbonyl group here as well as the carbon-carbon double bond here to give you a single bond and single bond to the oxygen, which we desire. So we can tailor these reactions so that we get the desired conversion of certain functional groups while leaving other ones alone. So with that, we conclude our discussion of reduction reactions aimed at yielding alcohols with a special emphasis in this unit on reducing ester yield alcohols and then some comparison between reagents that will reduce esters with reagents that are required for reducing aldehydes or ketones.